This is part of our math review. If you haven't watched the previous segments, you probably want to start there. That's right. Uh, today we're talking about how things change. We're filming this in 2020, and a lot of things have changed. Specifically though, today we're going to be talking about how functions change. This is useful for all sorts of reasons. Leibniz and Newton developed calculus, the field of mathematics that includes derivatives, integrals, and gradients, to understand physics. But we are particularly interested in optimizing a function. And by optimize, you just mean finding a maximum of a function like we talked about uh, before. That's right. Uh, and we need gradients to figure out when a function is getting bigger or smaller. Okay, but what is a gradient actually? A gradient is how much a function changes when you change one and just one of its inputs. I think I'm going to need an example. Let's start simple. Let's take a function that takes a number x and squares it. Okay, I remember enough calculus to know that the derivative of this function is 2x. That's right, and because this is a function of only a single variable, that's the gradient with respect to x. Uh, okay, so we write it like this. The way that you said it seems to suggest that we're going to be taking uh, gradients with respect to more variables in the future. Yeah, so this function is going to be in 3D. Uh, it'll take two inputs, x and y, square x, square y, and then add them together. Then the gradient of f with respect to x is just 2x, and the gradient is 2y. That's not too bad. So why do we want the gradient of a function? Well, later we'll be talking about loss functions, and we'll want to make these functions as small as possible. So let's use the gradients to make f as small as possible. Well, that's simple. It's the smallest when x and y are both zero. Just, just look at it. Right, in this case it's obvious, uh, but for the loss functions we're going to be working with later, uh, the answer won't be so clear. Okay, so how do we use the gradients to figure out when f is small? Let's say that we guess that the minimum of the function is at x equals 2 and y equals 1. But we know that it isn't. How does this help us? We can evaluate the gradient to be 4 and 2. Oh, so the gradient is actually a vector. That's right. Uh, here's how we can write that mathematically. Uh, what are those fun, funny symbols there? So that inverted delta is called nabla, and it's the gradient symbol. Uh, when you apply that to a function of multiple variables, you get a vector of that function's derivatives with respect to each variable of the function. Taken together, the gradient is a vector that points in the direction that the function increases. But we're trying to make f small, not big. Right, so we can just take the negative of the gradient and move in that direction instead. Negative 4, negative 2. Uh, but that vector points way beyond where we know the minimum is. That's right. To optimize a function, we, we need to take tiny steps. So we usually find the gradient by multiplying it by a small number. Maybe in this case, we'll use a step size of 0 0.5. Did you just make that up? Yeah, so it's often hard to know what a good step size is. So sometimes people use a step function that changes over time, or that's based on what the gradient was before. Okay, so we take a step in that direction and we reevaluate the gradient. Now it's zero, and if we evaluate the gradient here and apply the same update rule, we don't move. So does that mean we're done? Exactly. So as you approach an extreme part of the function, the gradient will approach zero. Why is that? One intuition is that when you're maximizing a function, it's like walking up a hill. When you're minimizing a function, it's like walking down into a valley. When you take a step away from the extreme point, the gradient will point you back to where you came from. So then at the extremum point, the gradient will say, don't move, you've got it right. For this class, do we need to be able to compute the gradients of an arbitrary function? No, we just need to have an idea of what a gradient is. 
and how a gradient can help you to optimize the function. So does the computer know how to compute gradients for us? That's a good question. In most cases, no, it doesn't. Uh, some of the functions are just too complicated. Uh, but there's one very important kind of gradient that it does know how to compute called the chain rule, which we'll talk about later. So this wraps up our mathematical review. We'll add some additional nuggets here and there as they're appropriate later, but this is the bulk of it. If you're able to get through this much, you're going to have the mathematical foundation you need for the rest of the course. Thank you so much, Alvin, uh, for joining me and uh, helping me understand some of these concepts with the class. Glad to be here. If you want to see more videos like this, check the video description for the course that comes from the link down below. You can then see the context and the correct order for watching these videos. YouTube will gleefully show you stuff in the wrong order. If you want other people to see this video, provide a big gradient to the recommendation algorithm by clicking the like and subscribe button down below.